afternoon press conferences, and you're not used to being invited to a press conference on such short notice, and we're sorry about that. But uh, things are happening quickly. John, Jim, Tom, uh, we're here today to talk about the uh, uh, communications, public safety, uh, bond issue that will be up for a vote before the council on Monday, I believe. And as you're aware, there are a couple of different components uh, with respect to what that bond issue would be financing. One of those components is an upgrading of the 911 communi communications system, and the other component involves the relocation of fire, and in one case, fire slash police stations. Our families, of course, uh, depend on a reliable 911 system, and they depend on optimally located fire and police stations to ensure that quick response in emergency situations. That's why I've announced that a public safety bond issue would be put on the council agenda so Lincoln citizens can vote on the issue during the November election. The plan would replace our aging 911 radio system. The bond would fund, in addition, a fire station in southeast Lincoln with a joint fire police station and relocate a fire station in northwest Lincoln, these two stations being the first phase of our public safety director's uh, station optimization program. On Monday, the City Council will be holding a hearing and a vote on the issue. And my colleague here with us today on the City Council, Lirian Gaylord Baird, good, good afternoon, Lirian, is with me today because she would like to amend the bond language to implement the entire station optimization program. I appreciate Lirian's approach and her change would indeed add another level of safety to several neighborhoods in the city. I believe her amendment might greatly improve the bond's chances of passing the council and the city voters. So I urge the council to move forward on the amended proposal and to put the public safety bond in front of the people for a vote. We cannot compromise on public safety. Residents who are at a greater risk for slower response time deserve the council's support and they deserve the public's support. A successful council vote sends the message that City Hall understands the public's priorities, is safe neighborhoods, safe families, and a secure future for all. So with that, I would like to ask Larian to step over here and tell us more about the specifics of her proposal and about her intentions on this matter. Thank Lirian. you, Mayor. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Councilwoman Larian Gaylor Baird. And public safety is our number one priority in Lincoln. And as the mayor said, our families do depend on a reliable 911 communication system and optimally located police, fire, and medical emergency responders. This can literally be an issue of life and death. Director Cassidy has repeatedly told us that the top public safety needs are to replace our aging 911 communication system and to improve our emergency response times. My proposal to address these priorities is slightly different than the current proposal before the council. I believe it would be advantageous to include all four fire stations recommended in the station optimization program for several reasons. First, the need for these stations is clear. Over 8,000 homes are currently outside the four minute emergency response time. The four stations will address the four separate growing areas of our city that are currently four minutes away from emergency services. Specifically, the two stations in my proposal will keep Northeast Lincoln and the southern tier of the city within the critical response time when life-threatening emergencies occur. Keep in mind, even though we are talking about fire stations, 79% of LFR's dispatches are to medical emergencies. And one of these stations will be a joint police fire station. 
Second, we can save costs for architectural services if we do it this way. Three of the four stations can be built with the same design. This has proven to be a good model for Lincoln Public Schools over the years. Third, I believe it is an excellent time to take advantage of low interest rates and a competitive development environment. As time passes, land will be harder to find, it is likely to be more expensive, and building costs and interest rates may increase. We should strike now when conditions are favorable to build these facilities. I first learned of our challenges with emergency response times as a planning commissioner when I joined in 2007. I think the fire station optimization plan is a sensible way to deal with the obvious growth of the city while recognizing that we are just emerging from the deepest recession since the Great Depression. These four stations will allow us to spread out our existing fire and rescue equipment and personnel immediately in order to put our emergency responders at the scene quickly. The complete package is a good investment in critical public safety and the cost of these four stations is about what is being spent to update the sound system and Wi-Fi in Memorial Stadium and far less than the cost of a single school. We should not shy away from making a strategic move to improve public safety by responding to our growth and preparing for our future. Thank you. Uh, Tom Cassidy is going to speak a little bit here for our police and, and uh, fire department. Tom's, of course, our public, uh, public safety director. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Councilwoman uh, Gaylor Baird, I, I appreciate your willingness to to, uh, to help us try to get these projects moving. Uh, the radio system is is uh, my number one priority. I, I believe it's number one public safety priority in Lincoln right now because we are so dependent on it. It works quietly in the background, but uh, millions of times every year, uh, police officers and firefighters in this community are depending on their radios to transmit messages to and from uh, one another and to and from our emergency communication center. Uh, it gets 24-7, uh, it, it 365 use. It's absolutely mission critical. Uh, without that, we revert basically to the same response model we had in the 1880s. Uh, so it's critical to, uh, to keep it up to date and reliable. And our problem is the parts of the system are, are now uh, 27 years old. Uh, it, installation originally started in 1987. Uh, the system has outlived its useful life, and although it's been incredibly uh, uh, reliable and, and uh, valuable, uh, it's, it's not going to last forever. Uh, our radio system uh, ceased being manufactured and sold by its vendor in 2010, and support will be ending entirely in 2017. It's, it's, I think, at least a two-year project uh, from the time you start until the time you have a, a new system uh, ready to operate. And uh, I've been uh, concerned for quite a while that, that, uh, that we're getting more and more vulnerable to a, uh, a problem that we can't recover from uh, quickly or maybe not even recover from at all. There are key components of our system that simply aren't made anymore and can't be acquired. Uh, so uh, we're, we're increasingly vulnerable. That said, uh, uh, it doesn't have an absolute expiration date, at which uh, we know it will, it will stop working entirely. And uh, I can tell you that uh, right now I, I, uh, I have a, a, a very effective and very heavily used uh, communication system. Uh, we're just coming up to a time when, when, uh, when we're going to have to move, and there's a certain amount of lead-in time that will be required to do that effectively. Uh, regarding the, uh, the fire stations, our, our chief need is to get our emergency resources into the areas of Lincoln where there's been considerable growth since we opened our last fire station in 1997 so that we can put emergency responders within a reasonable time when there's a life-threatening medical emergency. And I'll ask Chief Huff to tell you a little bit about how critical that is. Thanks, Director. You know, uh, we, we talk about a four-minute uh, travel time for our response time for emergency responders, and the reason for that is, is simply whether it's a medical emergency or a fire incident, the quicker we get there, the better the outcome. Better the outcome for a victim of a, a sudden onset a medical emergency such as a heart attack uh, in a fire scenario, uh, clearly the quicker we get there, the smaller the fire is going to be. Four minutes is the industry standard that we've uh, built our optimization plan on, four-minute travel time. That's our goal. 
we identified a number of areas in the community where uh, we weren't meeting that goal and so in order for us to, to maximize our efficiency we proposed uh, relocating uh, four stations and by doing that uh, we could improve the, the coverage and, and achieve that four minute uh, goal in a much uh, larger area. Diane, do we have uh, some graphics for this? Uh, this, is, okay. this shows the areas, you know, point out the areas that are more sure. than These are actual calls, these little yellow dots are actual calls that have occurred uh, since 2011 to this week where we did not meet that four minute response time goal and you see there are quite a few of them. Uh, by locating the station, I think there's another graphic here that will show. When we do the relocation, you can see all those areas are covered. There are a few areas that still are not. This big gap right here is Holmes Lake. That's why it shows up as a gap, no streets. Uh, the airport, uh, Capitol Beach Lake, and a few of those other things. And, and of course, on the very, very uh, edge of some of the, the annex areas, we're, we're not going to cover those with this. But we are going to dramatically improve uh, our ability to cover the majority of the community within that uh, four minute response time goal. Thanks, Chief. Uh, one of the four facilities, uh, it will be one of the, uh, the two that is planned in the, uh, the southern part of Lincoln, will be a, a joint police and fire facility. And uh, I, that's another uh, very important need in my estimation. Uh, Lincoln has grown dramatically and we're at the size now where we're experiencing some real problems when we're deploying uh, officers to the southeast quadrant of the city from a downtown headquarters. And I've asked uh, Chief Jim Pashong to talk a little bit about that. Well, everybody's been telling you about the growth of the city and, uh, and, and our needs to get public safety resources out to the peripheral of the city. And, and that's really what it is all about for a joint police and fire substation out in southeast uh, Lincoln. Right now, a lot of people, I think, can relate to this, driving from downtown to 98th and Highway 2, where Walmart, uh, Sam's Club is, it takes a while to get out to that particular location. During shift times, we have our southeast officers that attend a briefing at uh, 9th and J Street. Upon completing that 9th and J Street briefing, they then have to traverse down Highway 2 and out into the southeast part of the city of Lincoln uh, before they're in an area where they respond to their calls for service. The, the police department has a goal of being able to respond to our prior, priority one and priority two calls for service uh, within 10 minutes, 90% of the time. Uh, we don't meet that goal. We're about 93% is kind of where we're at, or I should say we're, we're just meeting that, that goal. We're about 93, 92 something percent of the time. So we're getting real concerned in regards to as the city continues to grow um, and our response time gets uh, longer and longer before we can uh, arrive to the scenes to uh, help citizens of Lincoln. And you know, we actually have a little bit of background on this. We have a Northeast substation that uh, we put in, in place a number of years ago, and that has served us real well. We've been able to save the expense of mileage on our cruisers, gas on our cruisers, uh, been able to uh, have officers come to the Northeast substation. They report there, and upon leaving their lineup and getting their briefings at that location, they can immediately get in their cruisers and they're in the area that they work and they, they respond to calls for service. That's what this facility, this joint facility would do as opposed to having these officers that attend a lineup downtown and then take 20 to 30 minutes to get out to their area of town where they're going to handle uh, calls for service and meet the needs of the citizens that are planning on us uh, helping them. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we've actually done a little bit of analysis uh, on that by uh, calculating travel distance from uh, a couple of locations that, that, uh, that, that might be good places for the joint uh, police and fire facility and comparing that with deployment from downtown. And uh, I believe that the savings we, we achieve uh, will be uh, tens of thousands of dollars in, in, uh, in fuel every year, but more importantly, uh, probably right off the bat about one full-time officer equivalent when you when you count up those little uh, you know seven ten twelve minute uh, travel times 
Uh, and that will continue to grow because Lincoln is going to continue to grow to the east and south uh, according to the uh, uh, projections in the comprehensive plan. Uh, so that time savings will get a little bit bigger uh, every year as the city grows. One final thing that I want to mention is that uh, we've had a, a new development uh, fairly recently, just this year, uh, after the optimization study was first released, and it's the decision by Lincoln Public Schools to site two schools, an elementary school and a middle school, uh, one of which will be in conjunction with a, uh, with a YMCA in, in an area, uh, uh, you know, along Yankee Hill Road. Uh, that's, that's really down at the southern tier of the city. Uh, I, I th not only do we need to be able to provide emergency services in a timely way to those new facilities, uh, but I think you can look virtually anywhere around Lincoln, and when you start building those kinds of facilities, you experience a lot of other uh, growth in that area. I was recently out for the first time in a long time uh, into the area around St. Michael's Parish uh, near Cheney, uh, south of Yankee Hill and, and 84th Street, and it's pretty remarkable to see everything else springing up uh, in the wake of that development. So I think that, that trend's something that this plan will address too. Uh, the, uh, one of the fire stations we're building, which would ideally be located in the vicinity of 70th and uh, uh, Pine Lake Road, will have uh, very good reach down into that rapidly developing area. Thank you, Mayor. Chief, can you point out which one is the joint? Oh. Uh, the, the joint facility could be either of, of the two uh, uh, South Lincoln facilities. Uh, we'll probably ultimately make that decision based on where we can find uh, land, uh, since this will require a larger footprint for a joint facility than it would for a fire station. A about a dozen people uh, during the course of, of a week work out of a fire station. Uh, at the police station, uh, about 45 to 50 people will work out of that facility. So it takes quite a bit uh, more footprint to, to do it, the joint facility. And it could be either of these two locations. Which were the two that were included in the original bond issue plan? Uh, the two original ones were the relocation of Fire Station 10, which is presently at, at uh, 1440 Adams Street. And that would move up on, onto Superior in the vicinity of uh, 19th to 27th on Superior. And uh, the second one was Station 12, which is presently at 84th and South Street. And that would ideally move uh, further south uh, to about 84th and Pioneers. And we've got some flexibility within those areas. Uh, we don't have to be pinpoint on it, but we have to be reasonably close. Probably, probably could look at anything within about a mile circle of that. Uh, but before we would ever pick up uh, any kind of land, we'd be redoing the analysis to see exactly uh, what we gain uh, and what the increment of improvement is. And the two additional fire stations would replace which one? They're not replacing existing stations. They're, they're new. Okay. And we would staff those by breaking apart uh, two of the stations where we presently house two separate fire companies. We have four stations that house two fire companies. Uh, a ladder company, an engine company, and uh, I at least in the short term, uh, uh, in, uh, short to midterm, we'd be staffing those by breaking those companies apart. I think the day will come here in Lincoln uh, down the road where, uh, uh, you know, the financial picture may improve and the city may be able to, to uh, consider adding uh, firefighters, but in the short term we can achieve uh, a good increment of improvement uh, simply by, by moving these resources to these new locations. So you're not adding any firefighters? No. Under, under this scenario? No. And we're still meeting the uh, demands that are in the contract for the number of men that are on duty and on the truck at the right time? Yeah, this wouldn't change our staffing at all. No, we'd, we'd be fine. We're required to have 76 firefighters on truck companies, uh, medic units, uh, and, uh, and engine companies, and we'd still be doing that. It'd be the same staffing. Okay, other questions? Mayor, will this get four votes on Monday? Uh, well, I certainly hope so. It's certainly, uh, this is certainly a move in uh, the right direction. It's good for the city, it's good for the neighborhoods, it's good for safety in the city. Uh, it absolutely should uh, get a, a majority of the votes on council. Do you think, Larry, do you think that's moving from just replacing two stations to four? is going to affect the vote because it is going to raise that tax I, I just think this is the right thing to do. Like I said, I first became aware of this problem when I joined the Planning Commission. And as a mom, it was sort of 
uh, hard to believe that there are so many people who probably don't even realize that their homes are outside this four minute response uh, time limit. There's no way that they find this out. They're depending on us to make sure that they're getting the protection they need and the public safety services that they need. And again, it's not just fire stations. This is primarily medical calls that, that LFR responds to. So for all the parents out there who think they're covered, um, we're here to say we want to make sure that you are. And my plan with the four stations will bring uh, almost uh, 8,000, a little over 8,000 homes into this um, more adequate coverage. So I think it's absolutely critical, the right thing to do, and I really do hope and I'm optimistic that we'll get the support we need from this from the council. And say it does get approved by the council, then goes through the uh, ballot in November, and then does not pass. So then it's zero stations being replaced, as opposed to maybe it passed for two and it passes in November, but now there's four, doesn't pass in November, no stations will be the next time we'd be looking at trying to get those stations replaced. Well, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I'm trying to do the right thing, and I think this is the right thing for our community. Larry, are these in the uh, six-year CID? I'm going to let Tom speak to that. Or yes, the mayor. They, are, they are in the CIP. They're... <clears throat> uh, are you talking about the stations, Kobe? Or are you talking about the, 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 the 911 system? The 911 system is in the CIP, and the first year out is the next big thing that is, was on our list. Uh, the relocations are down the way, down the line a yeah, little ways. They're all in the so, CIP. But they're all in the CIP. Also, uh, Larry, another question. Also in the CIP, three years from now, is a uh, new 911 communications center um, at about five and a half million dollars. Is there a reason that you didn't include that in, in this as well? The, uh, that's it, uh, in Tom's bailiwick, I think. Uh, uh, that well, one reason is I never uh, recommended or brought it up. Um, I think that's the lowest priority of all the public safety needs right now. Uh, relocating the 911 center has been in the capital improvement project for many years now, but a couple of things have changed. Probably the biggest thing that changed is the emergency management agency, the county emergency management moved out, uh, freeing up all that space that they had previously occupied for the uh, communication center to, to uh, stretch its legs a little bit. And another thing that happened is uh, uh, the public safety director's position was uh, appointed and uh, we, took the uh, 911 center, which had previously been a, uh, a unit in the finance department, and I moved it into the police department. I did that primarily because the police department is about 80% of the total workload. When the phone rings at 911, 80% of the time it's for the Lincoln Police Department. I thought it was more sensible to have it under the direct management of Chief Bishong and his staff uh, because of that, and also because they're in the same basic space in, in the uh, lower level of the uh, county city building. So I think the need for a new 911 center is way off in the future now rather than immediate and that's why it uh, that's why it's uh, far off in the CIP and that's why I'm I have never recommended to the to the mayor or, or to the city council that we move it forward Doesn't the existence of the backup center make a difference to uh, well the backup center has been there for quite a while Diane we do have a, a backup center that we've enhanced though that's another thing that happened the uh, training division of the fire department which was located in fire station 14 uh, in the same uh, area that the backup communication center also moved. And uh, uh, the training division essentially moved out to the municipal services center, freeing up more space in the basement of uh, fire station 14 for the backup center to, uh, uh, to, to get some elbow room as well. So basically our, our, our square footage needs are, uh, are not nearly as critical as they were back when that project was first floated into the CIP. And right now I think it's a fairly low priority. Um, probably occur sometime uh, well into the future. If Larry, normally on these kinds of large issues, there's a lot of. These, I'm sorry, Nancy, these kinds of what? Large issues, broad yeah. scale, lots of money. There's a lot of backup work, you know, and you kind of see it going on as you, you know, work for consensus. This just kind of came up at the last minute. Is there any special reason that it came up at the last minute? Well, I, you know, I guess I wouldn't say that it came up at the last minute. Uh, it's been in the CIP. It's been moving up in the CIP for a long, long time. 
Uh, we've talked about it uh, at budget time. We've talked about it different over a period of years. Uh, we knew this has been coming. Uh, we've, I have, have taken the position that we need to move ahead on things, on a variety of things, mostly those things that have been long identified in the CIP. Uh, and when uh, it appeared that we would not be able to use the November election cycle for purposes of uh, a sales tax, it seemed quite appropriate to me to make use of that opportunity uh, to advance our uh, public safety agenda. Can I just add something to sure. that? You know, Chief, um, Public Director Cassidy also did his presentation about the radio communication system during the Taking Charge initiative, and we had, you know, dozens, hundred people who came to that, and it was uh, really it made a big impression on me to see how many people got behind the this system, knowing what the cost of it is. I mean, it's it's not a cheap thing to buy. It's one of the reasons why we have to have a bond in order to pay for it. So I think uh, being witness to the number of people who came out and said, that, yeah, we've got to get this done, is a, one of the reasons I feel so confident um, getting behind this bond issue. Obviously, a big reason for the relocating of these fire stations is like you guys have been talking about response times. But um, I don't know, Chief, if you want to uh, answer this, is those buildings obviously are old. Did I had heard some firefighters say that they didn't have a lot of room to get ready, to get dressed, to get in the truck. Did, does that have part effect on the response times as well, not just the location? You know, the, the two stations we're talking about uh, replacing Station 10 and Station 12. Uh, Station 10 at 1440 Adams was built in the uh, late 1950s, early 1960s. Uh, the other station was built in 1975. Both of them have some significant uh, deficits that would take quite a bit of money to correct. We could do that, however, they're not in the best location. And so why would you put money into an old building in a location that really isn't ideal when you can take those same dollars, reinvest them in a new structure in the right location? So that, that was part of the, the decision-making process that we used. And you're absolutely right, the station at 84th Street, if you were to go out there today, some of you maybe already have, the garage space, the fire engine barely fits. If I were to buy a new pumper today, it will not fit in that garage. That's just the fact. Chief, how bad are the, uh, are, the, are the response times? The response times right now are not what I would call bad, but they're not going as far as they can. We're trying to maximize this, Kobe, as, you, as you've seen in the optimization plan. We're trying to get the best bang for the buck that we can out of all of our folks. And by moving these stations around, we can actually maximize that efficiency and improve response time. We talk about four minutes. I don't want to take four minutes to get there. I want to be there in four minutes or less. That's our goal, four minutes or less. But we get hung up on four minutes. Everybody thinks, well, it's going to take us at least four minutes. That's not the goal. The goal is four minutes or less. And by moving these units around, we can maximize our efficiency and get as much as we can out of the cost of our personnel, which is what we're trying to accomplish. We, uh, we have very, very specific data on those response times, though. So, you know, although John and I don't have it at our fingertips right now, uh, we could tell you exactly uh, how often we're hitting that response time. Uh, and we have been watching it pretty closely for a number of years now, and, and uh, we are increasingly concerned that we're hitting uh, that four-minute travel time uh, goal uh, at, at a lower and lower percentage as each year passes. This, this map, by the way, that pink polygon, on top of the gray city limits of Lincoln, that's the area that we can get to in four minutes from an existing fire station. Uh, the previous one, please. And again, those yellow dots represent actual medical emergencies since January 1, 2011 until when I did it last Wednesday, I think, 13th, uh, that were within the city limits of Lincoln and yet outside uh, that four minute travel time and these four stations put the vast majority of those emergencies uh, inside that four minute travel time. And obviously the uh, city limits of Lincoln are gonna continue to expand. Uh, Tom, that, that yellow part that's up north central, what yeah. is around there? It's 27th and? Yeah, uh, 27th uh, north of Superior, so uh, Folkways, Fletcher. And when you think about it, if you're familiar with the, some of the things that are on the ground in some of these locations, I mentioned the new uh, middle school and elementary school. Up in North Lincoln, we've got a lot of senior living up there. 
And that's, that, that'll be, uh, Chief Huff and I, that would be our number one priority. If there was one place in the city that we could project better coverage, that would be at the top of the list because that's where we're having the most medical emergencies. And it's probably because we have a lot of senior living up in that area, along Sea Mountain Road, Folkways. Uh, down in the southeast uh, of Lincoln, uh, the, 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 uh, the big cluster there is out around, uh, oh, the Nebraska Heart Hospital, uh, Vintage Heights Subdivision, Menards, Walmart, uh, Sam's Club. Uh, so, and we've got some new senior living out there too, which is a really good predictor, by the way, of where you're gonna have a demand for, uh, for medical uh, services. And then, uh, then the, the far south station, the one that would be located somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 70th and Pine Lake Road, uh, you know, that, that development is uh, they're, they're, uh, just really beginning to, uh, to uh, increase out there. We've, we've got the Thompson Creek subdivision. We've now got the area around St. Michael's. And coming real soon, real quickly, is going to be all this development that accompanies the, the new schools. The northeast, what's the yellow? What is that? Yeah. That's, uh, that's basically the area east of uh, uh, 84th between uh, roughly Holdridge and Layton Street. Uh, if you've been up 84th Street any time recently, uh, there are a whole lot of new uh, rooftops out there, uh, whole, you know, uh, new churches, new retail, so uh, pretty rapid development there. Uh, and that's, that's what that cluster is that we're trying to address with the location there in the vicinity of 84th and Holdridge. You know, one thing I like about the way the fire department and the police department operate, and one of the things we learned from them early on in the administration was that you do need to establish performance indicators and objective performance goals, and they have had them for a long, long time, both in the uh, area of, of crimes and uh, different kinds of time measurements and getting an emergency vehicles out, whether they're fire trucks or uh, uh, emergency hospital situations. And so we, we I believe, have a, a, a fairly clear idea of what most needs to be done in order to improve uh, the ability of the fire department and the police department to provide a higher level of safety for all our neighborhoods and all our people. Any last questions? All right, thank you very much.